Welcome to the University of Saskatchewan Head and Neck History Taking Video. In this video, we will show the steps needed in conducting a full head and neck history from a patient. The head and neck history proceeds like any other history taking and includes 1. Patient identification 2. Chief concern 3. History of presenting illness 4. Past medical history 5. Past surgical history 6. Family history 7. Social history 8. Medications 9. Allergies The anatomical regions important to question about in a head and neck history include 1. Ears 2. Nose and paranasal sinuses 3. The neck, which includes the oral cavity, the pharynx, the larynx, and the thyroid now, let's look at some focused histories for conditions of the head and neck. The differential diagnosis for otalgia can be broken down into pain caused by local pathology of the external, middle, or internal ear structures, or can present as referred pain from structures that are innervated by cranial nerves 5, 7, 9, and 10, based on embryology. When taking a focused history for otalgia, ask about OPQRST, as well as hyperacusis, discharge from the ear, and dizziness or imbalance. Hearing loss can broadly be broken down to conductive and sensory neural hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss occurs when pathology is located to the external or middle ear, while sensory neural hearing loss is usually a manifestation of inner ear disease. On history, ask if the hearing loss is unilateral or bilateral. The onset, duration, progression, and frequency, accompanying vestibular symptoms, previous surgery to the ears, head or ear trauma, noise exposure, family history, ototoxic medications, systemic diseases, or signs of infection. Tinnitus is a sensation of ringing in the ears. The differential of diagnosis of tinnitus can be broadly separated as subjective or objective ringing. On history, ask about the characteristics of the sound. Is it constant or intermittent? What is the duration? Is it uni or bilateral? Is there a history of head trauma, medications, the presence or absence of hearing loss, vertigo, and other neurological signs or symptoms? Dizziness is a term used to describe any variety of sensations that produce spatial disorientation. It is important to distinguish amongst different kinds of pathology. Vertigo is the illusion the body or environment is spinning while lightheadedness is the sense of impend impending fate or presyncope. On history, ask about the presence or absence of rotary motion to establish true vertigo, exacerbating and alleviating factors such as postural changes, head motion, or closing the eyes. Ask about changes to hearing or and or tinnitus. Changes in taste, swallowing, or speech may suggest a central nervous system cause of dizziness. Ask about a cardiovascular history. Ask about alcohol consumption. Finally, ask about associated neurological symptoms. When inquiring about nasal obstruction, ask about congestion and stuffiness, facial tenderness and pain, noisy breathing or snoring, and pruritus of the nose or eyes which could suggest an allergic etiology. When asking about rhinorrhea, get the patient to describe the duration of symptoms what makes their runny nose better or worse? Elicit whether or not the patient suffers from allergies. Get them to describe the character and color of the nasal discharge. A complaint of altered smell sensation should be followed by questions related to whether the process is unilateral or bilateral, the onset, the presence or absence of neurological symptoms, recent head trauma, the presence of a clear, salty, tasty nasal discharge could point towards a CSF leak. Epistaxis is most commonly from an anterior bleed in Kieselbach's plexus. Less commonly, a nosebleed can arise from the posterior vessels. On history, be sure to ask about the onset and duration of bleeding, the frequency of past episodes, the use of medications and street drugs, especially cocaine. Ask about the symptoms of local and systemic diseases that may give rise to epistaxis. Specific risk factors for epistaxis include hypertension, anticoagulants, nose picking, nasal surgery, 
nasal septal per perforation, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, bleeding diathesis, and rarely, sinonasal tumors. Focused history taken for a cough should elicit the onset and duration. If the cough is worse during the day or night, if it is dry or productive. If productive, describe the volume, color, odor, and consistency. Is there an associated dyspnea or chest pain? Inquire about environmental or occupational exposures. Dysphagia can be grossly broken down into pharyngeal causes and esophageal causes. Today, we will focus on pharyngeal causes and the history of dysphagia. When inquiring about dysphagia, ask the patient if there is any noticeable mass. If the difficulty swallowing is associated with pain, ask about regurgitation, aspiration, or hoarseness. A sore throat is a nonspecific complaint. To help determine the etiology, a good history is required. Begin with any standard pain history, and in addition, ask about signs of infection such as fever, malaise, and anorexia. Is there a cough? Inquire about referred otalgia, neck lymphadenopathy, splenomegaly, trismus, or change in voice. Hoarseness or dysphonia is another nonspecific complaint. The etiologies of hoarseness are many, ranging from very benign to more sinister pathology. The focus history for hoarseness should include onset and progression, the timing during the day, associated pharyngitis or referred otalgia, cough, hemoptysis or constitutional symptoms, dysphagia or odynophagia. Social habits including smoking and alcohol are very important to elicit. Past history of radiation exposure, previous surgery to the neck, history of gastroesophageal reflux disease, history of lung or breast cancer are all important to inquire about. A focused history is important when assessing a neck mass. Ask about location to determine if the mass is midline, lateral, or diffuse as location can narrow a differential diagnosis. If the mass is lateral, ask if it is unilateral or bilateral. Ask about oral ulcers or persistent sore throat, otalgia, dysphagia, odynophagia, hoarseness, dyspnea, environmental or occupational exposure, and travel history. If midline, Ask about the features consistent with hyper or hypothyroidism, hoarseness, and again, environmental or occupational exposures. Make note about the age of the patient. In young patients, neck masses are more likely to be congenital or inflammatory and less likely to be neoplastic. In adults, a neck mass is malignant until proven otherwise. A description of the onset, tenderness, and rate of growth of a neck mass are important characteristics to determine. A tender mass with rapid onset is suggestive of an inflammatory process, whereas a non-tender and slowly growing mass is more characteristic of a malignancy. As with any potential cancer presentation, it is important to ask about constitutional symptoms including fever, chills, night sweats, and weight loss. As mentioned before, there are specific head and neck cancer risk factors that must always be asked about. These include tobacco use, alcohol use, and previous radiation exposure. In addition, previous infection with the human papillomavirus can predispose to malignancy. Be sure to ask about cough, hemoptysis, or bone pain to rule out metastatic disease. When inquiring about thyroid function, it is helpful to break the, the history down into three components. The cause of the disease, symptoms of an enlarged thyroid gland, and symptoms of excess or lack of thyroid hormone. When assessing for the cause of a thyroid disorder, ask about a personal or family history of autoimmune, thyroid, or other endocrine abnormalities. Ask about medication use that can disrupt normal thyroid function such as amiodarone. Inquire about pregnancy and the ingestion of certain goitrogenic foods like seaweed, kelp, or iodine. When asking about symptoms of an enlarged gland, assess for the presence of dysphagia, dyspnea, or dysarthria. Hyperthyroidism would manifest as tachycardia, palpitations, and weight loss. Hypothyroid-afflicted patients may complain of weight gain, cold intolerance, and fatigue. Thank you for watching this video. 
We hope you have found it useful and enjoyable.